Hey, bring the hot sauce. I mean these hot wings real quick. I'll we'll start filming in a minute. Hey, Wolf fans. You know what? I don't even care. I'm hungry. It's lunchtime. Y'all just going to have to deal with it. But I will promise I will not smack while I'm eating. Oh, dear. So, what's going on, my fellow wolves? Wolvettes, loves, love it. Lovians, Whovians, who's, who's it's, was it's, Wang Doodles, Everlasting Gobstoppers. Welcome to the den of the bad wolf. Once again, your favorite guy in black. The bad wolf. All right. So, this particular video is on how to open a U.S. bank account <clears throat> online without a social security number remotely. Now, you can also do this if you want to do it for a foreign bank or whatever. We're just using this as educational information only. I expect everybody out there to use all the information on my site, which is education, whether it's here or on blacksite32.com, in a self-governing manner and compliant with whatever jurisdiction you are in or so you abide by. All right. <clears throat> so if you live in the United States without a Social Security number, you may have found it frustrating trying to open a bank account with a traditional big bank, credit union, or even a small bank. Now, from what I understand is that they can ask, but they are not supposed to really ask or impose because the Social Security number is not supposed to be used for that purpose. Now, they kind of backtracked on that a little bit, and it's kind of looked at as a national identifier. I don't know where that lies with Congress, but... Last I heard, it is actually an offense, a violation of federal law for them to ask you for that, as that is not a federal, true national identifying number. And as you, if you didn't see in the last video, the Social Security Administration is in fact a private, though sponsored and recognized, co corporation, but not a federal government corporation. Okay, so the good news is that there are several ways at your d disposal that you can alternately apply for a bank account without a social security number. So we're going to give you four great virtual bank accounts that do not require a social security number or an ITIN. Now, why would you want to use that? Now, this is mostly for people who are undocumented uh, workers who are here in need uh, or immigrants who need uh, bank accounts. All right. I personally would feel safer with the money under my mattress. But if you need to pay for things with a card, or you move around a lot, or you are um, a traveler and you have no primary residence, okay, you're not domiciled. You might need one. So, all right. So the first one on the list here okay, is a company by the name of Wise. W-I-S-E. The WISE multi-currency account remains one of the fastest ways to get access to your personal U.S. checking account details for free without a Social Security number or proof of res U.S. residency. In addition, you can actually also get access to nine other accounts, including the GBP, EUR, and etc., meaning that you can get paid and send money like a local branch in 10 different countries. 
Okay. Now, apparently, formerly they were known as TransferWise, and they deal with at least 50 different currencies. Okay. So international U.S. banks do not require residency in the U.S. or the or a social security number or an ITIN. Typically has minimum deposits and high fees and balance requirements. Okay, online accounts, low cost options that do not require social security number or ITINs. Some accounts may ask for proof of U.S. residency. Ideally, if you do not need debit services like loan or credit cards. So who can open a bank account without a social security number? Offshore companies with no U.S. ties, such as foreign 98 type companies, foreign companies with no U.S. ties, foreign owned U.S. limited liability corporations. Okay, so who should consider remotely opening an account with an online bank account provider? Foreign individuals for most countries. Non-residents living in most countries. In other words, online bank accounts providers may not be able to legally open an account for you only if you are a citizen or resident of a select few sanctioned nations. Okay. <clears throat> so most of them will want some type of identification or ID or, ID or location. Um, Let's see, so I'm gonna run through a list of them here. Okay, so online accounts, or they're called NEO banks, N-E-O banks in the US are up and coming, okay? Easier than traditional brick and mortar, low cost banking, Most of the accounts that I'm gonna read here are not actually banks, but are FinTech companies that partner with regulated American banks. Okay, so number one on this particular list is majority, okay? This is well suited for new arrivals and migrants in the U.S. with residents, but not yet a social security number or ITIN. Okay. Monthly fees is $5. No cost for the cards and payments. U.S. residency is required, but no social security, no ITIN. Next one is Sable, S-A-B-L-E. Low fees, low requirements, low, few registration requirements. Also, once again, people who do not have a social security number. Now, remember, if you have a 98 or a domestic EIN, you can open up an account. However, you set that up is on you. That's all I will say. Um, Zenus Bank, Z-E-N-U-S Bank, is a licensed and regulated American bank that provides all remote U.S. accounts in almost every country. You have to be a U.S. citizen or a resident. Okay, you must have a passport, proof of, I, of address in your home country, a completed W-8-B-E-N. This is for the IRS. What? All those people out there were doubting me with the W-8-B-E-N. Where y'all at now? Mm -hmm. Where my trolls at? Most clear to, in order to get this bank account, which is semi private, more private than traditional ones, but still yet, 
a passport and a W8BN. Hmm. They've got a $50 a month fee though for it and a one-time application. I don't know if that would be my necessarily go-to one, but it says no social security, no ITIN required. All right, we already talked about wise, low rates though. So according to this article, the ITIN, Individual Taxpayer Identification Number, can be used by un undocumented immigrants to get an ITIN, and it is legal to do so. For the ITIN, you can use the form W-7. You can mail it in or fax it in. Just go to the IRS website. Okay. So once again, the best four banks that do not require a social security number. Wise Account, Sable, Majority and Zenus Bank. There you have it, my good people. So, if that is something that you need to use for your particular scenario, I will trust and have faith that is all in the good and legal purposes. But um, for those people that it applies to, just look up how to open a bank account without a social security number step by step. You can even do it at your local banks, though they're going to press you because they're pressed by the government to make sure that they do everything accordingly for U.S. citizens and taxpayers. Okay. I wonder if they have anything in the private for like private banking, for nationals under 8 U.S.C. 1401, private foreign individual, I don't know, eh, crazy. Maybe I'll ask sometimes in private to a personal banker sometime, maybe, I don't know, we'll see. All right, any old way, it's just me talking a little crazy jazz here. Um, once again, thank you guys for chiming in, and if you like the information and you feel so moved, uh, hit that bell, like, subscribe. And I will talk to you guys later. Remember, you can always find more information about me on my private channel, which is the Bad Wolf Media Channel on YouTube, Patreon under James C. Lovett, and um, BlackSite32.com. .com. All right, that's it. Go have a great day, guys. Stay positive. And... Um, Ah, uh, what else can I tell you? All right, so um, I have a number of supplements, and one of the top supplements that I have is actually a probiotic, because the gut and head and body and nose and ears all have bacteria, okay? But there are healthy bacteria. So getting a probiotic, yogurt, and whatever else is good, but going out and getting a special one, you know, um, with multiple strains of positive, healthy, beneficial bacteria uh, will do wonders to, to a person's system, okay? Do your own research. Make sure you consult your doctor or physician or somebody licensed if you are a public individual and see if there's any benefit possibly there for you. Otherwise, this is just my experience, and all I can say is that um, there are lots of uh, unique properties to having the good bacteria in your body versus the negative ones that cause 
said such things as sinuses and ear ringings and headaches and indigestion and things of that nature. So look into it. That's all I can say. This is stuff they don't want to teach you in school. You know, this is what we do here. We're bringing you that, in, that info. That's education, though, so be entertained. From your favorite non-belligerent, non-combatant treaty with the United States, treaty with the world and the universe. Hey, let's expand a little. All right, that's it, guys. Talk to you later. Wolf's out.